Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing McGill's chair test. And yes, this is the same Dr. McGill who came up with McGill's Big Three core exercises, which you see all over social media and YouTube. And they're usually used in low back rehab and to promote stability in all three planes of movement of the lumbar spine. We'll get to that in a separate video. But for now, the chair test. So McGill's chair test is used to test the effect of compressive loads on the lumbar spine in various positions in order to determine if somebody has an intolerance. Usually, vast majority of people are gonna have an intolerance for either extension or flexion. And for the most part, most of those intolerances you'll find in the clinic are flexion intolerances for various reasons, we'll get to that. So to perform McGill's chair test, the patient will sit in a chair, as you see right here, and firmly grasp the sides of the chair. I'm doing it with both hands, okay, left and right. And then the patient attempts to pull themselves further down into the chair. Basically what you're doing is you're using your arms to pull your butt closer and closer, harder and harder into that chair. And that's gonna put an axial load on the spine. So you can see here the test is first done in a neutral position. There's the axial load right there. The test is then repeated in other positions, like a slouch. So getting a flexed lumbar spine. Then you repeat that test. And a lot of times the test stops there. But you can also test the lumbar spine in an extended position. So for that, we'll just tilt back like this. And then same thing, add that compressive load by pulling our butt into the chair. Now, if that doesn't elicit any symptoms, it's still possible that there's an issue. So what you do is you add more load. One way you can do that is you come behind the patient and add additional axial compression, so additional weight, because some people's symptoms may need to be provoked under a greater load, or you can do what we're showing here, and that is have the patient stand and do the same thing. So again, you start in a neutral position, And then I'm going to hunch forward, go into a flexed position. And as you might guess, we finish with an extended position. So what constitutes a positive test? Well, it depends on the position in which the person experiences more pain. If they have increased pain in the slouched position compared to the neutral position, which is shown here, they have more of a flexion intolerance. Now, what do you do with that information? Well, you need to know where they felt the pain. Is it central low back pain without radiating symptoms? And by that, I mean they're not experiencing anything into the buttock or anything down the leg, okay? So central low back pain. That could indicate a disc issue. And when I say a disc issue, I'm talking more of a central protrusion, not one that would go out to the sides and cause a radiculopathy. Okay, a central protrusion that might be impinging on the anterior theca of the spinal cord. And then also a functional instability. And you can actually test for that with some other things that we'll look at later on. If they have radiating pain down one of the legs, it possibly indicates a lumbar radiculopathy or something similar that you need to investigate further. So in other words, if I do this test here, here in the neutral position, that's fine, or maybe there's a minimal amount of pain, and then I go to the flexed position and I do the same test and it's like, oh my gosh, that hurt. That was more pain than the neutral position. That is a positive test, okay? Now, if the person has increased pain in the extended position compared to the neutral position, that would be more of an extension intolerance. And you're probably gonna see that more in lumbar stenosis or if there's facet dysfunction. Because remember, to irritate the facets, you put the spine into extension, technically also um, some side bending and rotation, uh, but that will get more of the facets in that position. More than likely, you're probably gonna see that stenosis aggravated by this. And you may not even have to, have to add much compressive load if they have stenosis. Just getting into that extended position without the load may cause pain. Adding a little bit of compression might exacerbate that even further, indicating a positive test, okay? Now, what constitutes an inconclusive test? Well, when there's equal pain in the extended or the slouched position compared to the neutral position, it's inconclusive. Pain is same across the board no matter what you do to the spine. That doesn't really tell you anything. You need to investigate that further. 
Um, and also, if the highest pain is in the neutral position, so here. So the pain here was higher than it is in the flex position or the extended position. That also really doesn't tell you anything useful, okay? Um, what it means is that you need to investigate it further. Now, could it still be uh, a functional instability, a radiculopathy, even a disc issue, stenosis? Possibly. It just may be that it's presenting a little bit differently in this test. It just means you need to investigate further. It doesn't necessarily rule out any of these conditions that we talked about. And that's why it's important to corroborate the result of this test with a few other tests during the course of your examination. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of McGill's chair test. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much.